wrong time to eat. just like this. What we saw? No. No. Yeah. I think I had a chance to even talk. Uh, are you losing much? Just some wine now. You wrote a book, uh, what's about three years ago now? Memoirs of a Geisha. Yeah. Well, obviously, it was a pun on Memoirs of a Geisha. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I did, the only thing I didn't come up with was the title. She wrote for myself, didn't like the top me, flute player at the time, Clyde Bell. Said you should call it Memoirs of a Geisha. And I said, Clyde, it's bollocks. It's really middle class of you, you know, and all that. Uh, so middle class. And I made a mistake when I went to the publisher and they said, You got a title here? I said, No. In flute player said, called it Memoirs of the Geezer, you know. Yeah. And they said, that's fantastic. <laughs> it was, and it was too late. If you'd make them change their mind, they would have stopped anything I would have thought of after that. They would have hated it, so we called it Memoirs of the To be Geezer. honest, it's actually a great title. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it kind of grown into the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We called it Geezer now yeah, as, as yeah. an abbreviation. And it's obviously not my own food, so it's about your life, etc. So going back to, to the pre punk period in the East End and all. What was going on there? Do you want to, should, can we start talking about that? Please? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I when I when I, I'm, I'm obviously I'm in the music business, so I'm self-obsessed and narcissistic, goes without saying. But I um, I also wanted to make a kind of a social history. I thought it was quite interesting the time I grew up in, the place I grew up in. It's it's yeah, it's just oh, it's gone now. Actually, yeah, it actually has gone. You've got kind of heritage sites and stuff like dock museums and you know, places and there's kind of a, there's a Cockney uh, convention um, kind of society, believe it or not. I went and did a talk at but it's like, everyone, they're all piss takers, so yeah. it, was quite, it was quite funny. But it was a dock community, Roman Catholic, um, it was, it, uh, it was the dying embers, just dying embers of the, of the, of the river, of the river as a working river. So which part, did you live in which part of East End? I can't, I grew up in Stepney. Yeah. My, uh, Mum's family were Wapping family, my old man's family were Alignments family. I grew up in Stepney and I lived in Shadwick, which was, I think was the poorest ward in the country for a while. And I lived in Bethnal Green, was the last place in the East End I lived. Yeah, and so, so what's your life? Your old man was in the East End, right? Yeah, he's actually from uh, Alignments. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 you never believe you met him though, because he's not so not a property at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, he probably knows you You could well do it, I'm quite weird, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what do you like in that period that you grew up there? This this would be like in the sixties. Um, well, I grew up. I suppose the Roman, Roman Catholicism sort of was, was that strongly influenced me, obviously. And I was brought up in the pre Vatican II, uh, which was the, the Vatican II Council. I think in the very early sixties. I think it took a lot of years for it to kick in, and I think that's when they, you know, they decided to have mass in English. Um, and to not be quite as medieval, you know, and all that. And my old man's brother was a Catholic priest, and so it was, it was all very, uh, you know, trying to grasp the Holy Trinity before the age of five. And it's a, I think it's a religion that um, it, it, it taught you your free hours, the Sisters of Mercy taught your free hours, as they did every, you know, very well. Uh, but they also gave you a fantastic disposition to be neurotic. And anxious as well to an extent, you know what I mean. And it also meant years on. When you're talking of drugs, when you went to take acid, that I found if you're a uptight Catholic boy, 
you best to stick with uppers and powders. <laughs> Is this your tip to the audience? Yeah, yeah, if you are, if you are a young Catholic person, although probably not free back from two others, I would advise most Catholics to stay away from uh, losing genetics. <laughs> We're wrapped far too tight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that like the, the key bond in the community then? Was it, was it yeah, the Catholicism and the yeah. work. Like a lot of religious groups, you feel that thing that you're, um, you're better than everybody else. And of course, the, the Jews, we had a lot of Jews in the area, and they would have thought the same thing. They were better than everybody yeah. else. So, you know, every religious group think they understand and know. So I, I do still think I understand I'm better than everybody else, but on an individual basis, you know, I don't need any religion to know I know everything. Yeah. That's just, yeah. Well, you can be too sure. Just, yeah. just about. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the young John Wardle like? Um, I was a voracious reader. I love reading. Um, and funny, I, I, I got that, don't take offence at this, I delivered my books um, to Waterstones myself to be sold. Adam they, does all my merch normally, but he was down in London getting ready to go back for this show that we did last night. So I went into Waterstones and I, I've got a a book problem still, so I stay at bookshops the way some people stay at bookshops. I've still got to read, you know, I've got a Kindle so I wouldn't have to keep my, but I get fucked off turning the thing on and the password and all that. You know. um, anyway, so I, I've spent more at Waterstones on Thursday than I would have, that I would earn there, than I'm you know, so I've done a load of money. And one of the books I'm a Tottenham fan, but I bought um, the Fergie, uh, for biography, biography. And uh, I, did, I hadn't even really read it yet, but I opened it up and he said we had the swimming baths, the library and football, his generation. And I'm closer to his generation than young people. I greatly resent younger people. I resent people actually now under the age of 40. I resent them in youth, quite directly. But, and so it was a much more limited world in a way, you know. And we had the, the swimming baths, football and the bloody library. You know, yeah. Um, I was a reader. So what kind of things did you read? Is that anything? What was it? Specifically? I was reading uh, the Upanishads by the age of 13, 14. Mm. Uh, so well, that's just kind of heavy things to do. Yeah, you know, a bit of a spiritual thing. Um, and uh, I was reading Hemingway quite young. I think I started off sort of Biggles, mm. you know. you know. So I was reading public school board literature, I suppose, basically. Mm. Um, and... Uh, um, so I was um, a bit high, I was in trouble at school a lot and all that. Um, so very bright, a bit of an attention seeker I suppose, so not much has changed there. Um, and, you know, quite a, live, quite a lively kid, but I know I also a very thoughtful be going off and reading for hours on end, you know, and having and being quite private, really. And that's the world, of course, that you, when punk started, you would deny that. It's all about dumbing down a little, a little bit. And it's all about being, you know, look at me, <laughs> you know. But I, I'm actually quite pro, I am really, to be honest, I am what I was then. I mean, was it what the Jesuits would say, give me the boy for the first seven years, I'll give you the man. And, uh, and I'm saying very, very much the same, the same kind of aspects in your personality. I like, like in the dressing room yesterday, there's people in there, and they're nice people. And Adam knows this, I'm very good at, you know, somebody coming in, and, you know, and sometimes you get disturbed people around the music, so... So I can have somebody telling me that they've um, they've travelled from Mars or come in just <laughs> and, they've, and, they've, and they can read people's minds and I'm your man for going, oh, you know, I never say fuck off. <laughs> I, I will sit there and, oh, you know. And the thing I do pull out is the Christian card, which I'll, I found, that if it is really bad, ask people to pray with you. <laughs> they will fuck off. Because I've had people want to come and do, I've had couples come back and want to do controlled bleeding with me in the age where, which is not, and, and when they do that, you're like, what? And they, want, and they want to actually sort of, you know, open their veins and exchange body fluids and, you know, like, like, can't quite, they actually really dark. And even that, I don't say, fuck off. I say, actually, you know, I'm a Christian, can we pray? So, yeah, and, and they actually fuck off. Too much even for them. Yeah, yeah, too much for them. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're gone. So that's me trying to But anyway, so I'll sit there. But really, what I think is, I just want to read me fucking book. Can't I have two minutes, please? So that's why I have a portable DVD player with headphones. Because that's definitely, look, I'm not being hostile, but I'm locked in my own world. So, you know. But, but it's, it's quite a private, shy person is what I'm saying. But you're not actually playing music. 
Uh, there's sometimes I just with headphones on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. So when, when did speak of music? When did music enter this equation of the, the swimming pool, or the library? Um, well, I did react very strongly to music. I mean, the culture I come from, there wasn't a background of visual arts, as I recall. So you weren't interested in, as I recall, paintings or introduced to paintings. There may have been school trips to galleries. I don't remember that at all. I don't remember many school trips at all. You know, um, not the primary school. I don't think they did it then, as I recall. Um, so it was books, novels, especially that was I grew up in the era of the novel, movies, and music. Uh, music really first and foremost. So um, the first, I, I remember the first singles. The first two, my mum used to take me to a record store called Paul's record shack, which was on what's called Whitechapel Waste. You'd come out of Whitechapel Market, you had the fish stall, and you had Paul's record stall, open on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and you had a record shop in Cambridge Heath Road. And, um, and my mum was, she'd, buy, I'd get a, she'd let me buy a single every week, and the first single I bought was Jim Reeves, Welcome to My World. Welcome to my world. Ding, ding, ding. Which a lot of the Jamaicans like. Yeah. Sure read that, and, 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 funny enough. Um, and Froggy Goes a Courtney by Bell Ives, which is like a bluegrass kind of. Froggy Goes Gordon, one time day, you know. And I, used to, and, and I always, I still like that. I'll, if I make a track in the studio, like, I'll play it repetitively for two or three weeks, obsessively, and, and then I'll never play it again. But I'll play those records obsessively. So people say, they've asked me if there was any musical influence. I would always say no for years, there wasn't any musicians, but then I kind of started thinking about it with a family, because the Catholic thing, at that time in the East End, every parish had a drum and fife band. And every year they would do a procession. And every parish band would march in competition against other parishes. And they'd carry the big, all the little girls at half one side with them, women looking up, and all the little boys up side with a sash and all that mark. And they'd carry great big uh, statues of Holy Mary and all that. And um, my mum's dad, who I never met, my grandparents, only my old man's dad, um, sort of they all died young and all that, you know. They, like my mum's mum worked in the ship grounds, uh, the rope grounds of the ships making rope. So all the fibres are getting their lungs and, you know, they, they die young. Um, and her old, her old man uh, was, was a really top drummer in the drum and fife band, Joey, Joey Fitz, give him Joey Fitz, they called him. And there was another Joey Fitz, a cousin, who was also a really, and actually that boom, diddly bap, diddly diddly bap, diddly bap, bap, diddly 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 bap, diddly, which actually is not that removed from, that far removed from Ganoa music, Moroccan music, say, which we were playing last night. Yeah, it's very kind of similar kind of uh, pentatonic, those kind of cross rhythms, three kind of triplet feels where you can count. You can count three or you can count four and all that stuff, you know. So I think that was, so I, I think I probably got a bit of that in my DNA. For some reason, I can get up there with a, a Marlon, a Ganawa master, and, and do the job and play along with them in an ad hoc fashion. I've got that in me somehow. So there is some musical talent there, you know. So then those are the initial records you got into. We, we, I'm sure you want to tell me you, you come into the skinhead thing, weren't you? Was, was that? I was just past that, yeah. um, but swayed yeah, you know, I mean, I do remember the skinheads very, very well. Um, was that big around that part? My sister, my sister was, you know, was all that. And it, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, very big. You didn't have hippies uh, where I was. No, no, I can't um, imagine. You just didn't have hippies. That wouldn't would be tolerated. I do remember standing at a bus stop. I don't know what I would have been there for, but um, I was up. It was up sort of West India Dock Roadway for some reason. I was doing up there. I would have been about 11, 12, a bus stop. And there was a, a hippie, real proper hippie geezer with the sandals and a dog up with um, steel toe cap boots and went for the bus. And just before the bus came, the doctor, doctor went up and stamped on the hippie's toe, which really crushed his foot, you know. And I just, and he was in agony. And we got on the bus and he, poor old hippie was left there. The doctor just, that was just him, you know, standing So it wasn't toe. that tolerant? <laughs> no, no, not really. It was very, a bit, could be a bit one dimensional, a bit claustrophobic. To be quite honest, um, you know, so he's you know, for better and for worse, but yeah, it's mac very match, macho society, not very strong matriarch figures as well, but um, yeah, very working class football, hard drinking, don't show your feelings, don't show vulnerability, 
you know, that's what the name of the game, you know. I mean, just a little side thing here, yeah. I, I could end up with Sporting Spurs, because surely West Ham or Mill will be your team. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't fair, it was a lot of Spurs fans, and not just, just Jewish people either. Um, it was Millwall, West Ham and Millwall were the two teams, uh, the Dockers teams. And Millwall, my old man was a Millwall fan, and he's, him and his brother used to go through the tunnel and watch Millwall, because they moved from Millwall, obviously, over to the sort of near a new cross, looking over the river. Um, and the rest of most of the family is West Ham. Your sister had a West Ham pennant on the wall and all that. But, but um, before I even supported Tottenham, West Ham played Preston in 1963. So everyone's around the telly. And, I, and they were playing Preston. And I, I was young, I said, I, I, I want Preston to win. And now, <laughs> and I said, I want Preston to win. I was always going against even in the well, I was only five. And I said, I want Preston to win. Um, and, and not long I spoke to Tottenham, because of Jimmy Greaves. Because okay. he, he was really, you know, glamorous. You know, we come back from Inter Milan and it was like, you know, so I was a Tottenham fan and it was the same about Spurs, you know. It broke me heart over the years. <laughs> Fucking all football teams disappoint you ultimately. Football's like heroin, it's a bit disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the few highs are not worth, you know. And the higher you get, the more you're going to, like, you're not fans, you're going to come down with a massive bump over the next few years, probably. Yeah. You know. Um, and then it's, you know, so even you, the, the, work, the bigger the higher, the bigger the low. So, so when you were swayed there, what kind of music did you just to that place? Oh, that was uh, Trojan, Titan Up series, Desmond Decker. Yeah, and Paul's record shop, he had, they had a blue beat chart, which basically blue, blue beat scar, and they had blue beat versions of every chart hit. So you'd have, you know, uh, Mark Bowden or whatever, you know, would be done in a scar version, you know. Um, and I preferred the scar versions of the pop songs a lot of the time. You know, I like that. Um, I really kind of got off on that. And, uh, and I like the instrumental versions. And of course, from the instrumental, which would be on the B side, um, and then from that came dub, of course, because they started affecting, you know, to make it and actually emptying tracks out, which was quite kind of radical deconstructing them. You know. So you kind of get into the good thing as well at this point, it's been the early 70s? Um, early first, early up, first up stuff I was, yeah, I would say 73 was mm -hmm. the first time I started to hear the, the little bit of space they come and stuff on it, it was about 73. Um, and you had, you had the blue beat thing, um, so you had, you know, uh, uh, David Ansel Collins and all that. So you'd go anywhere, West Brom, you'd have liquid air, West Brom or whatever, you know. They'd all, they'd all be, it was, it was the popular culture. It was the popular urban culture. Uh, it was, ref, you know, that, that, was, that, that was the music everybody went for in, the, in a, what's now in, called the urban environment, you know. And uh, as we know, it was, it was very underrepresented, uh, uh, unrepresentative, uh, unrepresented in the charts unfairly because of the chart return system, which was quite bent, I think. So I guess shop side polls wouldn't be in the charts. Well, you know, some record shops would not give the proper returns. You know, I think it was, from what I understand, it could be quite easy to, you know, to, you know, for, for sales reps to um, get a load of ticks that they shouldn't get for records sold in order to, to get records in the charts. And a lot of people felt it was an unfair system, obviously, back then, you know. And Reggie was, was the real sufferer for that. A lot of its records, a lot of the ready records sold didn't go through chart return shops anyway, so they would have not been on the radar for that reason, you know. Um, so because they just still, you know, those local ready stores in high streets in in black areas, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have been visited, they wouldn't have been part of that system, you know. At the same time, I think do you also get to like rock music? Well, I liked I liked um, a lot of the. Uh, it's funny talking to Tim, you know, because I remember I remember him in them early days and they had that psychedelic thing going on, Charlotte, you know, and uh, and I quite liked that in the pop then. You had that kind of element in British kind of music. Um, but so, you know, I quite like some psychedelic, some, some psychedelic sort of stuff. I come to like Hawkwind, you know, I thought was good. I did like um, stuff like T-Rex and the Sweet. There was some pop music. It was fantastic, Visconti and all those kind of, you know, those kind of productions that I listen to to this day, thinking, wow, listen to the just the, the skill of EQing, recording things properly, um, good live performance from musicians, being EQed properly, being set at the right levels, and you know that kind of stuff. It's just crafting it. It's yeah. exactly it's, it's crafted stuff. 
But I like I like the Who Quadrophenia was a record I absolutely loved. I thought that was fantastic. Um, I didn't really like Tommy, but I, I thought Quadrophenia was, was fantastic. Although well, most of the Who fans hated it, I actually loved the packaging. I loved uh, Stevie Wonder in a Visions album particularly. Um, this, as I grew up in the sixties, Tamar was very popular. Obviously all over the place, you know, all over the country. But you'd hear that they went out of pubs. What, what called, they were called young pubs. You know, like anyone where young people went and played, that was a pretty new thing that was frowned upon by older blokes, dockers and that, who would just want to go into a boozer. And the only music you get was at night, on a weekend with a piano, without a sing song. Um, you know, they're getting like... It just seems like a Victorian time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, funny, when I become a... I used to, I didn't like pubs without music. I, I, I must be, when I drunk, I wanted to go and drink and have the music of conversation, mm. you know. And I know that, I mean, I've quit drinking, as you know, years ago, that time and that part, but a lot of the musicians I, I know now who like a drink, they go to a couple of bars around Camden where they don't play music. And of course, they're the ones popular with the jazz musicians because they don't want to be here. They've got music on and in their nut all the time anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So they just want to talk with each other, you know. Yeah. So you were obviously by this point, you weren't a suede head anymore, you kind of moved to a... Yeah, well, I used to wear that. I had a Crombie. And my mum, looking back, I found my mum a very hard time really, over the years, but I used to wear, um, she would get me gear, I'd have a, a Crombie and a, and a two-tone plum and black, green and blue, green and blue was my favourite, my hair suit, just above the ankles, you know, loafers, um, um, or what the, the, the proper brogues, you know, with leather soles, you'd put Blakey's in your shoes as well, so you'd make that clicking noise oh, on the metal. They were called sags of it. Oh, Blakey's, was different different names, yeah, yeah. Blakey's we call yeah. them. You'd have woolly kind of very bright red socks, um, or bright blue socks, kind of woolly kind of texture. Um, ben Sherman's, slow press, uh, slow press trousers as well. You'd have to pleat up the back uh, with a bit of Ben Sherman. All those, it's funny, teenagers are such conformists, you know, that it's got to be just right, you know. So, you know, they're the biggest conformists. So, uh, and you'd have, to, you'd have a silk hanky in your crumbly. Yeah, little silly, you have to be folded over like it made a triangle and all that arc, yeah. So yeah, I was a, I was a, I was a right nuisance. Uh, <laughs> I really was, I was a real hand for I was really uh, annoying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, in the punk here you had a reputation for being a bit of a hard man. Is that already happening in the pre punk era as well? I've taken to sort of denying that a bit, trying to play it down, because I think it, it can become a bit of a caricature. And I really embarrassed myself on stage last night. I mean, I, I'm embarrassed by what happened, because I, we had this prop with a limiter. Mm. So, um, at this place, a tabernacle. So every time uh, we went too loud, it cut out. We did two sets. It was a blinding show, the sun show. And this Ganoa geezer, ma 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 master, and we started playing with him. And there's a big stupid thing above the stage that went from green to red. And when he went in red for more than 10 seconds, the whole back line would cut out. And it happened like 20 times. He was able to carry on playing. But I ended up going to think and saying, you know, you know, you fucking cunts. You took that fucking cunt off that cunting fucking thing. Oh, I went in one last night. Gadget sampled it, innit? The sound man, he's starting to make the track of it on the white sheet. You know, must be like no, 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 19. So there's already a big circulation. You fucking guns, you know, from last night. And I, and I do think, oh, I'm supposed to be a meditative sort of bloke, so uh, I really showed myself up, you know, I really lost it. I felt I've really shown weakness in an eastern way. I mean, the Moroccans didn't even notice, did they? They were just fucking playing, you know, so it's quite mad, you know. They were just, hey, Joe, it's great, you know, they were having a great time, but, uh, so yeah, I could be, I could be an handful, yeah, I was, I was more, I was an, more like an anarchist kind of troublemaker, I always loved making trouble, you know. So how do you go from that kind of circle into the, like pretty punk kind of stuff, you know, meeting all the life. Oh, very easy. Um, went to secondary school um, and I got, I got expelled for 14-ish and I fucked off to Bournemouth. Yeah, again, must have called him a lot of uh, worry. I just fucked off to Bournemouth uh, with a power mine. Um, I was down there for a few weeks. I had a job in the market, so I made, you know, 
Um, I work, I work Leadville Mark, I get, get up really early. I get up early, I still do. Um, I sort of went down there and I went to Kingsway College of Further Education, which had a reputation that was like, it was kind of like, they deal with, you could go, it was like, I it was a version of a sixth form college now. And that they had a, a, a pretty tolerant understanding of, of people that have maybe been had some sort of disciplinary problem, shall we say. And I went there, and I was not like, even 16, I don't think, and I met John Lydon. And, and then Sid came a year later to be with with John, you know, and that's how that's it, that's how it happened. John, John was, um, he was a couple of years, two or three years older than me, and he'd be, I think he'd had meningitis, and so he'd missed a bit of school, and that was why he was there. And then Sid came and Sid was a cut was a year or two older than me, you know. And he, he joined a year later. And as he came to that college, um, John kind of got into the pistols and he'd met that lot through Sid. So, you know, Sid got me got short straw in it hanging out of me. He's supposed to sick year, you know. But um So when, when you met John Lydon, was it was he all had look or was this when he's up all the long hairs? Long hair, long hair, yeah, long hair, yeah. He made kind of cap we had pretty charismatic and made me laugh and we just hit it off. Um, <laughs> I mean it was it was great. I mean I love Kingsway because the East End, talk about Dockers standing on Geezer's sandal boot, um, for toes so to speak. Um, I suppose that song we used to sing. Tiptoe through the tulips, yeah. uh, we sang those on get your face kicked in. Tiptoe through the tulips, we used to sing a football. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> and there was other songs about. They did. They did like sandal wearers, did that. It was about industrial. Did understand up north industrial footwear. And all yeah. That, you know. Anyway, North London even it was had quite a few hippies. So that kind of North London is an internish, you know, tough sort of environment as well. There, but you you had. Um, if you with Noah and I, you know, the, with the scene with the wrecking ball and all that, and with them, and they're in that pub, that was very, it was like Kingsway right around there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so he started meeting these kind of hippie characters. You didn't have hippies, they couldn't survive in the East End. You did not have hippies in, 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 in like, around the step there, they just didn't see it. Um, and so I started meeting kind of hippie ish kind of characters. Yeah, Elijah, he must have been a different kind of hippie, really. Well, John, John, no, he wasn't a hippie. Yeah. Um, but he kind of, he, he likes all that sort of scene, mm -hmm. and he introduced me, I don't think I've been to any live shows, I don't think at that point, and he, um, I, I, I was just, I did start to go to Auckland of my own volition actually, so I did go to theatre, but he um, introduced me once to the Roundhouse in Camden, and every Sunday night, it was a proper hippie night, oh, real hippie stuff. He said, do you want to come with me for this place? We'd take piss, take piss out of here, but he's a goat dog. He actually was in the goat in them and tormenting them a bit. And uh, one of the first times I went there with him, there was a geezer just sitting there. And he goes, all right, all right, all right. He went, all right. And I said, it's fucking half a ground. Remember the fire? Yeah. And he went on top of the pops and he had a, you'd never get away with that because of health and safety. Yeah. <laughs> so, quite right, I might say. Um, but then you could be on top of the pops, you could have your head on fire. It was, it was all right. <laughs> and I said, did you know him? I still don't know how he knew him, but he knew him. And so you had that kind of scene of people around there, and it was, it was very good for me. It was kind of a bit bohemian-ish, and I really liked it. And so I started knocking about. I met more people from sort of around the Angel, isn't it, and all that. And uh, it was all just a little bit more kind of loose, and you know, people would go to see shows and festivals and that kind of stuff. And, was there John Gray around as well? Yeah, there was John, it was like four John, so me, John Gray, John Lyde, because I'm John obviously, and uh, John Beverly or John Richie, Sid, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, there was, was a few Johns on. Because he's quite keen, that little gap of four Johns, John. Because he, John Gray have all the 